In today's video, we have Stephanie Tanner. She's lost a lot of weight with intermittent fasting, and she figured out how to make it work for her life. All right, well, thank you for being on this show today, Stephanie. Why don't you give people a little introduction uh, about you know, who you are and, and what you do? Um, I'm, my name is Stephanie Tanner. I'm married. I have two daughters. Um, one will be 16 in about a week, and the other one is 12. Um, I mostly stay at home and run them around and um, cater to their every need and whim. Um, and I have my parents own a business that I kind of manage for them. So I'm busy with that also, but it gives me a lot of flexibility. So, Right. Great. Well, so tell us a little bit about how you're finding weight success now. Um, well, what I'm doing now is I am using intermittent fasting. I'm, I'm doing OMAD. I had tried doing it in the evenings because I thought that would work better for me and my family. Um, but what I've kind of found through some trial and error is that I feel better when I eat around two. Um, so yeah, so I'm doing kind of a, a big meal and then, um, just kind of hanging out with them. We're so busy in the evenings. My oldest daughter plays sports for high school and also travels softball. And so we're practices, lessons, you know, running around constantly. And so we don't get to sit down and eat together at night very often. And so we just kind of, when we all get home, everybody's kind of already eaten. We hang out a little bit. Um, and so it's working better for me to eat earlier in the day. I just feel better. Um, and uh, movement every day, some kind of movement every day. Uh, I had tried to really regiment myself, um, mm -hmm. and that caused me anxiety. Um, right. That would make it, you know, if I didn't do what I had specifically planned to do, I'd get anxious about it and either not do anything at all or act like a crazy person and do all the things. Um, right. <laughs> uh, so now it's just every day, it's what do I feel like doing? So some days I may swim. Some days I may do some weight training. Some days I may get 20,000 steps in. It just kind of depends. And that just seems to be what's working right now. And, and how much have you lost? Um, it was 60, and I'm, I'm up about six pounds. So, <laughs> right. You know, it, it, it just – it. It's a fluctuation. I think last week there was a day that I was at like 158 and the next day was 153. So, you know, okay. there's no rhyme or reason to what the, the scale says. Absolutely. I mean, and I hope, I hope people can hear that and really understand the scale times it fluctuates up for no reason that we can see, right? right. It's just... You have to learn to deal with those fluctuations. So would you say you have a daily routine that you just, you stick to certain things every day, or is it just kind of like you go with the flow? I kind of go with the flow. Um, initially, when I first started to lose weight, I, it, it was like a program that I had started, and the way that it worked, it was high protein, um, no replacement shakes, and they did two days a week. They called it a cleanse, and later I figured out that that was intermittent fasting. And so um, I've kind of evolved from that. And so now what I kind of do, um, it's how I feel. So if I get up and I want to have coffee, I'll have some coffee. I put what I want in it. If I want to put half and half in it, I do every once in a while. Like this morning, I had creamer um, that I put in it. And then usually, and that's kind of how I got to the, the eating around the 2 o'clock is um, there were days that I just, it was like, okay, I plan to have my supper. I plan mm -hmm. to eat in, in the evenings because I, I wanted that. I, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted that to work better for my family. And I found that um, in the afternoons, I was wanting like, like a snack. And so it was like, mm -hmm. okay, maybe I'll eat something high protein. And then that snowballed into all of a sudden I've eaten. Um, <laughs> And then I wasn't hungry later because it was like, okay, well, I've eaten. It's no big deal. Um, right. I'll eat my supper, and then I'll start over tomorrow. But I didn't want to eat supper. I felt good. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's kind of where I'm at now. So I get up. I'll drink coffee if I want to. Most of the time I want to. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
Um, and then usually, you know, anywhere from 12 to two, just depending on how I'm feeling, what kind of workout I did that day, what my schedule looks like that day, because with my parents, um, business, um, every day is different and everything that the, the business needs is different. So like one day I may not hear from anybody at all. Everything's great and smooth. And then the next day I've got 12 phone calls that I need to go put out fires. Um, so anywhere between 12 and two, usually I'll eat. Um, I eat what I want, however much of it I want. Um, and then in the evenings I'm good. I don't need anything. Right. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your history, like with weight loss, has it always been a challenge for you or is it just like, you know, something you've recently had to deal with? Okay. So growing up, weight was not an issue at all. Um, if anything, putting on weight, um, I was, I was super skinny. Oh, wow. um, yeah. And never, I was an athlete. I played a lot of sports. I never thought about my weight. My weight was never, I would have friends that would talk about how fat they were. And it was like, you're crazy. There's, you, you look perfectly fine. And I never internalized that. I never thought, wait a minute, do I feel fat? Do I look, you know, whatever. Um, I felt good and it was, it wasn't an issue. Um, I did not have good eating habits growing up. Um, mm -hmm. My, my mom is 5'11 and is, naturally has no issues with weight. My dad is a scrappy little dude and he has no issues with weight. Um, I have a brother who is a, like six, four and he's a string bean, no problems, you know? And so like mm -hmm. breakfast for us was a little Debbie fudge round. Like that's what <laughs> breakfast was. Um, I drank Cokes if I want to cut. Well, okay. I'm from the deep South. Everything's a Coke. So oh, right. pop, soda, you know, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. Carbonated beverage. Um, right. You know, drank those if you wanted them. Just never thought about food at all. It was something if I wanted it, I ate it. And if I didn't, I didn't. Um, and my oldest daughter, I had at 22. Mm -hmm. And when I was 24, I was, I guess, 15 pounds above my n normal weight, what I was used to, I guess. Um, and all of a sudden still like myself didn't feel like I had any issues, but the girls at work were like always on diets. And so mm -hmm. then I started to feel like, Oh, am I, you know, I'm bigger than I used to be. And now all of a sudden I'm uncomfortable with myself. Right. Um, so I started, um, counting calories and I would get up every morning at five o'clock in the morning and go work out and like work out hardcore. Um, <laughs> and I lost about 20 pounds and felt really good. And then, um, my, we decided to have my second daughter. So we had her, I gained a lot of weight with my pregnancy, but lost it right after no big deal. And then she had a lot of health issues, like, um, really severe eczema, terrible mm -hmm. allergies and um we decided that I, she was at her daycare and eggs is something that she's allergic to and mm -hmm. she would steal the eggs off the other kids plates at breakfast so oh, no. it was like maybe i need to stay home with her but right. they can't, you know they've got a bunch of kids is like herding cats in the rain right. you can't keep that one kid from not eating the other kids eggs so right. um <laughs> So we decided that I would stay home. And so when I did that, I didn't have to get up in the morning to go to work. So I didn't get up at five o'clock to go work out. Um, and so slowly put on some weight again, you know, maybe, maybe 30 pounds and see what I've figured out now that I'm paying more attention to this is everything about how, you know, when you change what you're doing in a way that you can't sustain, Mm -hmm. You're going to gain your weight plus because eventually you go back to those old habits. Right. Um, and so, of course, I did. And so I gained a little bit more. And then about uh, five years ago, I did Metafast. Mm -hmm. um, and it was fine. You know, mm -hmm. I lost about 40 pounds but couldn't sustain that because right. – 
it's food in a packet. And so eventually you don't want to do that anymore. And it's just like, you know, people talk about how they take medications and it starts to make them feel better. So they don't need that medicine anymore. Mm-hmm. It's kind mm-hmm. of the same thing with you're like, Oh, I'm fixed. I've lost this weight. I don't need to, I can go, I can eat regular food now. Right. Um, so I did and gained extra weight back. <laughs> so, you know, growing up, it was never an issue. I never thought about it and did not develop good habits because it wasn't an issue. <clears throat> and then, um, and then as I've gotten older, you know, the losing it and the gaining it and the losing it and the gaining it, you know, it became an issue. And then, right. and you, everybody says it, but it's a hundred percent true. Um, you know, if I could go back to my 25 year old self and be like, what you think is fat is not like, Embrace that extra 15 pounds and just live your life. Oh, I love it. I love it. So was there any plan aside from Metafast that you did, and then maybe you had some success with, but again, it just kind of failed you or, you know, like you thought it was going to work out, but it just didn't. And, and what did that look like? I, I think everything that I did was successful in that I lost weight. Um mm. The, the initial calorie counting that I did, um, you know, I lost weight with that. The Metafast, I lost weight with that. Now, a couple of years before um, this this last bout, um, which I started in um, the very end of April 2017. So about mm-hmm. a year before that, I had kind of decided my life is great. I, I have a wonderful family. My husband loves me. My kids love me. I am healthy in that I can do the things that I need to do. So mm-hmm. who cares? Who cares if, if I'm, you know, if I weigh more than I would like to weigh. Um, and so I started walking because I wasn't doing any kind of physical activity at all. Mm-hmm. And in my mind, that extra walking every day, I was totally going to lose weight because, I mean, <laughs> I'm doing these things. Um, and... I did it. You know, I, I, I think for like two months, I like really committed to walking every day mm-hmm. and I didn't lose anything. And it was like, okay, <laughs> this is a waste of time. <laughs> I'm not, getting, I don't feel any healthier. I don't look any healthier. <laughs> Forget this. I'm busy. And so <laughs> I think that was something that I thought was going to be some sort of magical thing. I'm going to walk. Right. I'm going to lose this weight. Um, and yeah, that didn't happen. Not true. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. So key. So do you feel like there was anything different this go around in particular, like a mindset change or something that you just, you realize this just made it different this time? Um, yeah, for sure. I, I think calming myself down, mm. chilling out, And, you know, really trying to understand why am I doing the things that I'm doing? Um, If I do something, I'm, I'm, I'm an all or nothing, I'm all or nothing. And I can get really obsessive about something Mm -hmm. and I want to know all the things and I want to do all the things. And, you know, eventually you burn out on that and you're like, then it's like, I don't want to do any of the things. I'm I'm just going to sit here and be happy and eat my fudge rounds and (laughs) not do any of the things. (laughs) So I've really tried to, you know, you think you know yourself better than anyone else and you don't. I don't. Mm -hmm. I didn't know myself nearly as well as I thought I did. Um, And so I feel like really taking the time, um, being a little older, I guess, and understanding um, that I need to understand what I'm doing and understand how certain things affect me. Um, and that's another thing, and I'm probably rambling at this point, but that's another no. thing. I think, you know, there are certain things we know, right? So we, we know why certain math equations work the way that they do. We know how, how to put a sentence together. Um, those are concrete things. 
we don't know what's specifically right for you. Right. You know, we do, the keto is not perfect for everybody. Mm -hmm. Intermittent fasting is not perfect for everybody. Um, you have got to really figure out what works for you. And there's so much information out there that you can really start spinning your wheels and start feeling like, well, but this is what all these studies are telling me. Mm. It's not working for me, but it's supposed to be working for me. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I had to figure that out. I had to figure out for myself, you know, of course, educate myself, of course, get as much information as I could, but then figure out how I could apply that to my life, um, my body, and really make some changes and do some things that I can be happy with long term and mm -hmm. still feel good. Um, because I didn't realize how not good I felt until I really felt good. Right. Oh, you know? yes. It, yes. It was, because when I, when I was 60 pounds heavier, I was happy with my life. Mm -hmm. And I had gotten to the point that I was like, this is who I am now. Um, I'm happy with this. And then when I lost the weight and realized oh, I was kind of miserable, I didn't know I was miserable. I didn't know I was tired all of the time and right. hurt. And, you know, so it's just, it's just figuring out. I, I feel like I'm being smarter about it, if that makes mm -hmm. any sense. Mm -hmm. um, instead of just like diving headlong into it and going to lose this weight, we're going to beat myself into submission and it's going to last forever. <laughs> That's right. like, you are in my head. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like so completely like I was so are there any challenges that you still face when it comes to weight loss every day every day um, <laughs> and they're always different it's you know it just depends on the day you know I, it makes me sound like a crazy person but I feel like I'm a different person every day um, mm -hmm. and maybe as women well we are you know, our home, our hormones are different and we're a different person, um, from week to week. So, um, I just try really hard to be as consistent as I can with the flexibility that I've set for myself, <laughs> which sounds like a contradiction, but, um, <laughs> I, you know, I know that every day, every day is a new day. I, I, on a podcast a couple of days ago, um, and I can't remember now who said it, but they basically said, um, you win some and you learn some, but you never lose. Mm. You're learning from it, you know, and, and something I try to teach my kids, mistakes are great. Mistakes mm -hmm. are like the best thing that you can do if you learn from them. And so that's mm -hmm. what I'm trying to do every day. I'm trying to learn from my mistakes because I'm still making them. Um, Sometimes it's, um, I don't want to get into that activity in, so I don't. And I, mm -hmm. I know now I don't feel well when I don't do mm -hmm. something, even if it's just walking, you know, a certain amount of day. Um, I don't feel well if I eat just a bunch of junk because I can mm -hmm. eat because that's something else I'm, I'm getting to. I'm just now getting to realizing and telling myself. Now, okay, we're going to eat. Mm -hmm. You can eat whatever you want, however much of it you want, because what I was doing is I was eating what I thought I needed to be eating, but telling mm -hmm. myself I could eat what I wanted, but not really mm -hmm. eating whatever mm -hmm. I wanted. Mm -hmm. And so then later, I'd be like, I can have this because I can eat whatever I want. And then I would like cookie monster it, like, <laughs> you know, and then... <laughs> Then I felt terrible about how that day went. And then that day, it was all downhill from there, whether or not, you know, I was like, okay, so I've screwed this day up. I'm going to eat whatever I want all the rest of this day. And then tomorrow, I'll make sure I keep it to this. And that was just, a dis you know, a disaster. And so I'm just <laughs> now getting until to a point where, you know, for instance, yesterday, I sat down, I had my meal, um, I ate what I wanted, and I had a big pumpkin spice, like, cupcake, and mm -hmm. I ate half of it and realized I didn't want any more of it, and it was like, 
the clouds opened up, the angels <laughs> came, and I put half of that cupcake off to the side. So okay. <laughs> I, I, I make mistakes every day, but, um, and there, it varies. Sometimes it's mm-hmm. with my eating, sometimes it's with my activity. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm trying really hard to learn from it. And I feel like I do a little bit every day. Yeah. I think that's a really important thing, a differentiation you made right there. Like there's a difference between saying you can honestly have whatever you want versus like, you can have whatever you want, but not really. Like, come on, be reasonable, right? And when you tell yourself to be reasonable, that's when you start getting crazy, right? But if you just honestly say it, you can have whatever you want. You do stop sooner. Like, I certainly found that. So, thank for you sure. for sure. And, and it's just being, paying attention to myself. You know, mm-hmm. paying attention to really thinking about, do I want this? Mm-hmm. Um, and if I do, then I eat a little more of it. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, okay, do I still want this? Mm-hmm. And if I do, I eat a little more of it. Um, and that's really been working for me. And, you know, I'm bad about, I'm bad about being tough. And, you know, you don't need to do all that sissy stuff. Just eat that food and tell yourself to stop and do it. <laughs> so I'm trying to get away from that and really be nicer to myself, I guess, which mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As I'm saying, it makes me feel like you big sissy, but it's true. I'm trying to be nicer to myself, and that works so much better than beating mm-hmm. myself into submission. Yes. Oh, such good words. Such good words. <laughs> so is there any one big lesson that you've learned from your weight loss journey that you like? You wish other people could just understand it, too? It's figuring out what works for you. Mm. It's really learning about yourself. Um, I I have figured out that there are foods that I thought that I liked that I don't. (laughs) Um, You know, you're told that pizza and hamburgers and french fries are amazing and you should Mm. want to eat them all the time. And the truth of the matter is, when I'm eating those things, they're okay. Mm -hmm. Um, but those are not the things for me that I love. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's figuring out, figuring myself out, learning what mm-hmm. I actually like. You know, there was a time that I was drinking four to five Cokes a day, probably. Mm-hmm. I don't even really like Coke, <laughs> which is crazy. <laughs> but it was there. Right? There was sugar in it. Mm-hmm. And you know, but I didn't really like it. You know, I would eat a bunch of Doritos. I don't really like Doritos. They're crunchy, and I like crunchy things. You right. Know, it's kind of like the Cokes. They're sweet. I like sweet things, but not right. necessarily Cokes. Right. I like crunchy things, not necessarily Doritos, but I sure as heck was eating a ton of those things. Right. So right. It's figuring – I think you have to figure yourself out. I think you have to – Kind of, you've said it before. You have to look at yourself kind of as an experiment mm-hmm. and kind of distance yourself to a degree from it and say, how do I really feel about this thing that I'm eating? Which sounds crazy because you should know what you like to eat. But I didn't. Right. Right. So yeah. I think that's, I just think that's important. Mm-hmm. Totally agree. So is there any question that I didn't ask you that you really wish I had have asked you? Well, I'm going to tell you, I'm a little myth that you didn't ask me how Uncle Jesse was doing. <laughs> oh, I was so <laughs> going to do that. I was going to cut it out. But I just, I thought she probably gets it all the time. I do. And I, just, I do. <laughs> um, but really, um, I, I think if you'd have asked me who – who do I trust the most and who do I distrust the most? Hmm. The thing I trust most in my life is God, 100%. That is the only thing in my life that I can trust, 100%. Mm-hmm. The biggest liar that I know is my brain. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, there are times, this just happened a couple of days ago, I physically, I was sitting somewhere and physically could feel fat, for lack of a better word. Like, 
the physical feeling of extra fat around my midsection. And mm -hmm. when I reached down and there, it was not there, it was not there, but right. I physically could feel it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my brain tells me things. It's kind of like with the fasting mm -hmm. I've done, um, in trying to figure out what works better for me, I have done up to, um, I think up to 72 hours. Mm -hmm which I liked and I, I I'm going to continue to kind of incorporate longer fasts as I go when I feel like, cause they just make me feel better. Mm -hmm. um, but when I first started doing those things, it was like, I, how am I supposed to go a few hours without eating? I'm, I'm you're supposed to eat six times a day. How in the world am I going to go 24 hours without eating? And your brain tells you you're dying at first. Right. Like, we're so hungry, you're starving us. What are we doing? And those are lies. Those are lies. Mm -hmm. You are capable of so much more than your brain is telling you that you are capable of. Right. Um, so I just, I think everyone should push themselves. Push yourself in whatever, you know. Push yourself mm -hmm. to run if that makes you uncomfortable. And it's okay. Being uncomfortable is okay. Being mm. uncomfortable is how we grow. And um, your brain is going to tell you that you can't do it. it my brain right. is the biggest liar that I know, 100%. Um, and so it's, it's, it's trying to figure that out and, and get a little bit smarter every day mm. and a little more honest with myself, I right. think. Well, thank you so much. I think that wraps it up. Uh, I think you have a lot of wisdom in all that you said. <laughs> So uh, if people would like to connect with you, what's the best way they can do that? Um, I have a YouTube channel set up. It's, I haven't done anything with it. <laughs> That's another thing, I, you know, it's the kind of pushing yourself. It makes me very uncomfortable, um, but it's something that I'm, I'm going to do. And it's uh, mm -hmm. Stuff Steph Says, um, so S-T-U-F-F-S-T-E-P-H-S-A-Y-S. Um, I'm on your Facebook page, the Six Miles to Supper Facebook page. Um, it's Stephanie Nolan Tanner. Everybody is, is just seems to really be encouraging each other and being super helpful. And I think that that's so important. Yes. Um, and so I'm, a, I'm around, I'm on Facebook. Um, again, Stephanie Nolan Tanner. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with anybody. You know, even if they just want to ask how Uncle Jesse's doing, we can talk about it. <laughs> so, well, thank you so much for being here, and we'll see you soon. Thank you. I appreciate it. You have a good day.